Hey everybody and welcome to the AVA Direct live stream. I'm Sean. I'm Wesley. And we're here to talk about some of the most recent news in gaming and tech and all that other fun stuff. Woo! Yeah. Woo! So, uh, Wes, before we jump in, I think this is your first time on the on the main stream, right? Second. second. Oh. I was here when you were gone. Oh man, I forgot about that. Oh wait, you mean when you were doing <sighs> nothing but making fun of me? Look, all right. Freaking No bully. regrets. Getting okay. bullied here. Hey man. Speedway coffee is not the greatest. All right, hey, hey, hey. this sir, <laughs> this Folgers, it's still not any better. <laughs> I mean, it might be a little bit better. Like, it's not. I didn't spend as much. You know what I mean? It's like a nickel cup of coffee versus like a dollar of, you know, a dollar. It's Folgers, man. Shut up. All right. Well, uh, today was a big week uh, for the tech industry today uh, or this week was massive and that's actually week, yeah. interestingly enough why joe isn't here yeah uh, is ces happened this week um oh and to answer the question put into chat why don't you take your own cup to speedway and just get the refills because i'm lazy and i've I'm, been trying I'm to do doing dishes like it effectively works out that i'll just have like seven dirty coffee mugs in my car I have to clean them all at once. It's just nobody needs to deal with that. Seven dirty coffee mugs in your car? Uh, however, oh, hypothetically, you yeah, would? Oh, yeah, I was about yeah, to say, no, saying, okay. Like, I, don't, I don't own that many. I think of whatever, however many I own would be the amount stuck in my car. Um, but yeah, so CES happened this week or is happening, I guess. Yeah, it's actually coming to a close. Yeah, when does it, it ends today or tomorrow? Uh, it's, I, w I would want to say today. Every, I, I see everyone on Twitter is departing. So yeah, I would think so, today was the last day, like the last big day i guess for all the big names and all that to be there i would assume yeah and and out of the uh out of the things we've seen of which there was a bunch at ces uh, a lot of new products coming out a lot of interesting things coming out amd did probably had the biggest um or was the most interesting company i suppose to watch um during this stream so they announced a couple main things the the highlights of it though are they announced third generation ryzen chips um which are going to be coming out they haven't specified when. They said this year. We can probably assume that'll be Q3, Q4. Um, and then the other thing that they announced, which is even more exciting, at least to me, is AMD is putting out the first 7 nanometer gaming GPU. They're releasing a new GPU. Um, and there's a, a lot of neat stuff about it. So we're going to be scrolling over. Um, have you seen anything with these, the new AMD cards? I've just seen a couple posts, but I haven't looked into my Gerard talking about it. Mostly. Yeah, like That's... so. So there's a kind of the. I'll give you the high points here. Um, so it's a seven nanometer GPU, and also Ryzen third generation is also seven nanometer, um, which AMD is the first company to put out uh, a process that can handle that. So that's interesting in of itself, just kind of as a. Um, that's neat kind of deal. Right. But where where it's actually kind of cool as far as consumers are going to see. Um, first off, it's 699, so this card is competing pretty closely to right around like the 2080. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of people are giving AMD some crap because they're not competing with 2080 Ti, which is valid. Um, but with that being said, last AMD launch, they were competing with NVIDIA cards that were two years old or were a generation back. So at the very least, they're they're coming a little bit closer. But the benchmarks that they put out. Um, which obviously it's AMD supplied benchmarks, so you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt, especially after what happened with Intel at the beginning of the year right. or end of last year. Um, it's going to be on par approximately with performance of the 2080 as well, um, which kind of brings it down to when the uh, 1060 came out and the, and the 580, 480, that was a really good thing for AMD because those two cards, they traded blows just about every way. Um, I hope this, that's what this is going to be with the new... Um, Radeon card coming out from AMD. The other interesting things that are going on with this, it has 16 gigs of high bandwidth memory, um, which is really cool. Is that necessary? That's a different discussion. Um, and then the, other, the last kind of thing that they're doing is this is going to be the first card that AMD is selling directly. I mean, that's, that's interesting stuff. I know, they, I know they're due for... A high performance competitor with NVIDIA. I know. I know oh, they're absolutely. very long. There was the Vega, but you know. We don't. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Yeah, it was just <laughs> under underwhelming. Um, um, yeah. So I mean, I'm hoping. Uh, I, I and we got to know that AMD looks at this and goes, "Man, we gotta we gotta get in the ring as well. Not at, only at the you know middle point, but the high points. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I mean that was something Joe and I were talking about. Um, it seems odd 
that AMD has not, has had such a great CPU launch over the last couple of years, but like their GPUs aren't. And and he brought up a good point, which was you know how long is that goodwill going to last in terms of you know when when will you stop considering AMD cards just outright? if they haven't been performing that well. And hopefully um, this indicates that they're they're coming back a little bit. AMD said, new year, new me. Jeez, oh, well, <laughs> hey man, respect to Lisa Sue. <laughs> uh, no, I'm excited to see, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what it has to offer. I mean, I have an AMD card now, mm-hmm. but that was just more or less because I had to get a new card during the time of the... Uh, Mining spree. Oh, jeez. So that was. I mean, it's just a five sixty. It's a four gig GDDR five. I mean, I can't. I can't hate. Um, I got it for two hundred dollars during the uh, the mining craze. So that, yeah, I mean, during the mining craze, that is not a good deal. Uh, all right. Ruru two. Hello. Oh, hey, Ruru. And then Gerard W ninety eight. I wonder who that could be. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Don't forget, Lisa Sue was throwing shade at Intel while talking about benchmarks and prices on stage. Yeah, I mean, with, uh, what was it, the 9700K and 9900K, the benchmarks that Intel released were inaccurate, or at least uh, we'll call it misleading, I guess is what it boiled down to. I know that was Gerard's favorite. That was like the favorite thing to talk, or that was his favorite thing to talk to me about with, uh, with that uh, reveal was, this is stuff at stock we didn't mess with anything he was literally going on because of lisa sue throwing shade like that I mean, was I his would, favorite thing i would believe it like man have you ever heard like lisa sue's oh, she's kind of funny like I, I mean, i've never heard her talk i'm gonna be honest like when it comes to cs i literally just watch a quick highlight and that's about all the time. fair i fair. like I, as everybody knows i'm i'm the gaming person around here yeah like when it comes to tech stuff i rely on uh, Sean, Joe, Gerard, I, I rely on word of mouth from them. Um, so like CES is, it's cool. I just watch a quick, uh, you know, quick like, you know, 10 minute video. That's about all the tech I look into. And you know, in that's not year. that's not a necessarily a bad thing. Cause CES um, is interesting in that most of it's not stuff that's coming out. Most of it's stuff that, or I'm sorry, most of it's not stuff that's coming out now or in, in the very, very near future. Most of it's like, hey, we have a prototype, we have this idea, we have blah, blah, blah. Here's kind of our proof of concept at this point. Um, so that's not really the worst thing in the world because if you wait another, like, two months, you're gonna, we're going to see benchmarks come out from third-party companies uh, or from th- third parties. So we're going to see a lot more um, on these, I think, over the next probably, like, two or three months. Uh, so Ruutu says uh, 16 gigs. Uh, why do I need that? Why that do I need quite those? Mm, who knows? I Part of me thinks... I mean, AMD kind of does that. They did with Threadripper. Um, now, I mean, obviously, Threadripper, you know, a lot of people use it. It's fantastic. It, part of what it seems like they were doing was just got to get that core count higher so that we can use that. Um, I kind of think that's that might be some of that in play with the um, with the Radeon 7, with that 16 gigs, because that is nuts. Uh Ruutu also said she did not put an aquarium chiller on the 9900K. Totally biased benchmark. Wait, what? Am I looking at the wrong thing? No. That's what I got right here. Right there. She did not put an aquarium chiller? I had to step away on that one. I have no idea. I'm just going to love it. I think that's a joke. Oh, I would assume so. I would assume that's a joke. Well, yeah, because like they would do, they would put a, a really awesome cooler on the Intel chip, like the 9900K, and then they would take like the AMD stock cooler and then compare them like they were. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. just odd. All right. Well, if you're good on the card. I, yeah, no, so I mean, the, the interesting kind of long and short of that card is AMD's card is coming out from what we can see so far and from the benchmarks and everything we've seen so far, it should be pretty decent. There are some things that are up in the air and some questions we still have, um, but those should hopefully be answered within the next month. I mean, the card launch is February 7th. So, I mean, at the very least in a month, we'll have uh, benchmarks from everybody, like Jay's Two Cents and all those guys. Oh, we'll yeah. I would like assume. a month, if not before. Oh, I would assume before. Hopefully. I mean, some of the bigger ones, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
I know the 1060 guy or 2060 guy announced they're already releasing all that. There's yeah, they already people have that are, them. Yeah. Yeah. So who's who's to say? I, they might. Yeah. You never know. Um, well, I am going to start on the next topic because this is one that I found and it's actually tech related. And I was actually like, wow, that's pretty dope. Uh, so EVGA uh, built a sound card for lifelike gaming audio. Okay. So first things first, it's 2019. Do we really need a new sound card? I think that was one of the biggest questions. I, I, I laughed when I was reading the article because, you know, uh, it is 2019. However, um, reading the article and then actually looking into, you know, the, the, uh, the company they teamed up with, um, it actually really caught my eye. Uh, so EVGA teamed up with a, a uh, manufacturer of audio uh, tech called Audio Note and... I've never heard of them. They're UK based. Okay. But the reviews were like some of the most insane. Like the, they're overwhelmingly positive. Okay. Uh, so for that to for them to team up with a, a company like that and deliver lifelike gaming audio, that's that's exciting to me. Because um, uh, I'm a big gamer. Everyone knows that, and audio is is make or break. Uh, so yeah, I mean, good good audio, good sound design in games too. That that's, I mean, if your hardware can't do it, what what good is a good sound right, design? Yeah, right. Uh, I also want to say, Rue, two seven hundred G seven hundred dollar GPU is way out of my budget. Yes, yeah, agreed. Um, but it, it'll be uh, to hop onto that a touch. They the they announced the Ryzen seven. I would be really surprised if we don't see like a four three two hundred dollar option come out from amd and like or at least announced in the next month i really think that's coming um all right back to the card creative super x phi card is a sound card to get for 2019 yeah creative makes good cards i'm, I'm kind of curious or it's interesting to see vga kind of jumping in because the the sound card market for the most part i don't want to say stagnant because that's not the right word uh, for it it's not that big it's yeah you only have i mean you have big. creative you have asus you have like three or four main manufacturers, so I'm curious to see if EVGA is going to actually break into it or if this is going to be like, we tried and failed. Like, I, I wonder how much they're going to actually like stick. I know for me, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting. I mean, there's a lot of headsets out there that offer really, really high quality without having to have sound, car, sound cars, amplifiers, studio mics, studio well, I mean, headphones, um, things of that nature. I used to have a, a HyperX Cloud 2s that had an external DAC, so like... Instead of having your sound card in the system, it obviously wasn't as good as something we would be talking about with like these sound cards, right. like the Claros. But it's better than the integrated, better than the standard. You see a lot of headsets coming out with those, so I wonder. But at the same time, I feel like this almost might be for a higher end than the gaming. It, you know what I mean? Oh no, hundred um, percent. And that's actually why I was so like, wow, this is interesting. Um, I love sound, so. And one of my old vehicles, like I, I balled out, and I, I, dude, I got like this, I got this dope sound system. I balled out on like an expensive amp, all the stuff. Like I went out. Uh, so when it comes to sound and audio and music, like I love that. Yeah. I love it. So stuff like this, and to just to read, um, you know, like the 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 attention they're putting, or not the attention, but the uh, the effort and detail they're putting into this card to just bring overall amazing audio is pretty awesome in my opinion um yeah no the um i'm curious to see if, if you guys are watching uh, do you guys have sound cards in your system or do you guys use um the integrated ones from like your motherboard I, i'm curious to see because i know in, in mine at home um i run based off just my motherboard oh yeah, same. Is that what you, yeah. oh yeah same, same. but then uh, like uh joe he's super super into like he always has to have a sound card it has to be you know so we can i didn't know that about him yeah no joe's um he's a big audio file one some something that i found interesting that you had in here about the evga sound card is that they actually noted and put some focus on uh on shielding it because it just in support the electromagnetic interference is such a pain in the butt trying to chase it down you have to figure out like there was at one point i remember uh Buddy of mine had a sound card where he had tinfoil wrapped around cardboard put under his sound card to prevent uh, getting that interference. So the fact that they they put some thought into that from a troubleshooting side of the fence, I, I appreciate. 
Uh, Ruru, why aren't sound card manufacturers embracing the ASMR market? Would be like VR for video card. That's actually really actually, good point. all jokes aside, I I would be I'm I would not be shocked if that actually becomes a thing. Oh, it would have to. It would have uh, to. I mean, ASMR is definitely a growing market. I don't. We were actually just talking just about that. About uh, it's is not my cup of tea. Um, what do you mean? How do you feel about sound cards? Hands. Wow. wow. <laughs> um, definitely not my cup of tea. Um, but it's definitely a market. With this day and age, anything can be a market. So. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Kitty's brings up a good point. A lot of game developers complain because a lot of the work that they do on audio doesn't come through with integrated cards. And yeah, I mean, that's the... Uh, yeah. Absolutely true. Sound design is a massive part of games. Uh, but what's That kind of brings up another, another difficulty, though, in that having good sound coming out of a game is part of like... There's a couple different pieces involved. You know, you have, you have to have a decent headset. You have to have either a sound card or integrated um, sound connection that'll, or controller that'll provide the right amount of audio output you have to have the right drivers and occasionally software installed that's kind of that's that's what's kind of interesting is with uh with the sound card coming out you know and sound cards are great you also would probably have to get you know high-end headphones things like that so it seems to be um i wonder if we're going to see more of these cards come out or if we're going to see motherboard manufacturers instead just start stepping up their their manufacturing i think we'll see more cards you do think, i don't think we'll see the motherboard manufacturers step up I don't know. Um, I mean, if they do, that'd be cool. Oh, it'd be wonderful, they, they, yeah. You know, kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. um, but you'd also have to take into price points. Uh, maybe somebody doesn't want that, but that's the board they want. Yeah, I mean, it, there's always going to be alternatives. But you also have to take into those accounts, too. Like, that's kind of an add-on. If you want that, you can get it, but you don't have to. Yeah, and the other thing that, that is interesting with the sound card is that that EVGA is working with Audio Note or working with a different company because one of my favorite EVGA products is their power supplies, like the G3 product line. Those are awesome. Um, they have like 10-year manufacturer warranties. They're nice and small. Um, but those aren't necessarily built directly by EVGA. They use an OEM called Superflower um, to make those PSUs, and that's a great product. They've been doing really well with it. I think that's been our most popular power supply for like two or three years oh, at this yeah. point. Oh, so yeah. it's it's encouraging to see that they're they're going to kind of try and do that same thing with their sound cards, and they're going to somebody that's already a professional. I mean, EVGA rules the market on a lot of things. Yeah, EVGA is, is pretty, so pretty beefy. This could be this could be their, their next area to dominate. It but, could, or it could be like their motherboards and cases where they're kind of underwhelming. Yeah. You know, I could see it either way. I really don't know. Well, nonetheless, uh, we should be seeing it. Uh, I, I want to say it was Q1. I, I meant to throw the date in here, and I forgot. But I do believe it's Q1 when we'll, when we'll see it. I believe Which, it. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? I can't wait for Joe to get, get back because he said he spent like in a he spent like 10 minutes in a demo for this card, and he said it was freaking awesome. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I saw it on uh, It was one of our um, social media posts from him at CES. Go check it out. Um <laughs> But he was like, it was freaking awesome. So, like, I can't wait to talk to him about it. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm curious to see his reaction and, and how the uh, how the event went. Uh, Route 2. The PC gaming market for us, more on the RGB LED than on board, on board sound. Oh, dude, you are not wrong. Yeah. It, no, uh, focus. Focus more crazy. on you. Right. RGB's gotten nuts. Do you see that they have dummy dims now? Really? I think it's Corsair. They literally, it looks like a stick of memory, but there's no, like... There's no DRAM on it. It's, it's literally, it's like a piece of plastic. You slide it into the dim slot, and it just has connectors so that it can light up. So if you have like a, you know, two stick kit, but you have eight slots, you can get six of these so you can populate everything and make them all light up together. I'm not really gonna say what's on my mind. Yeah, like because we're, cause we're not air, allowed to. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's <laughs> what? The okay, heck? come okay. on. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Um. The next one on the list, speaking of RGBs, uh, <laughs> MSI's ambient light is an RGB blast is what I read. So uh, it's pretty much, uh, it's this really cool piece of uh, tech that they created. Um, we have it up on the screen here. So essentially what it is, is it's these two, uh, I would say light sources. Um, and they, they work 
with what is going on around you in the game. So I, I know that the only game right now it works for is uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. So like if you hop in the water, like it, it comes up with like an ocean blue or, or something like that, and it displays the lights like either on your wall or ha however you have it set up. That's kind of cool. Exactly. So um, I, the, the way I see it, it can make gaming a lot more immer immersive. Yeah. Um, you know, let's just, ooh, good point. You're, you're playing an RPG and it's like storming. You know, lightning flashes. You so is this like, like a, a flash? Is it like a P, is it like an external thing that you hook so in? So if you look, uh, if you scroll down on your page, can we bring that up real quick, Brooke? So if you actually look at the second picture, um, it's those two those two pieces on the, each side of the uh, monitor. Oh, they I look believe. like little lamp almost. And it might even deal. be that thing up above as well. I, I really couldn't tell. Uh, but you, do you see that uh, like square or whatever? Actually, the, the, the middle picture to me, that looks kind of like the GameCube logo. Right? right? I, I couldn't <laughs> identify. I was like, is this part of it or what? Um, but uh, nonetheless, if it's just the two little uh, light sources, I, I still think that would be pretty cool. I'd be curious to see this in, in a setup. Like, I don't know about my home but we have those two stream rooms that we have here. Mm -hmm. I would be curious to see that, you know, kind of where the, in like a streaming setup where you have a face cam. Right. I'd, I'd be curious. I, oh, would I see really where you're coming Yeah, like, I, so yeah. you're, yeah, oh, definitely. Goes. Um, I mean, nonetheless, it's, it's something unique. It has to do with RGB, so people are gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, wrong. But... The only downside uh, is there's no release window yet. Uh, they're aiming for Q2. Uh, but as of right now, from what I read, is it's going to only be MSI products that it's going to work with uh, for the time being. I, I, know they're, I know they want to reach and like capture the full market. Um, however, that right there, if that's something they don't take care of quickly, this is going to be something that is not going to go anywhere. Oh, I mean, right when RGB first came out, the... You know, does it work with Aura Sync? Does it work with Mystic Light? Does it work with this proprietary software? That was that was a huge thing. And now finally, for the, mo well, I don't want to say for the most part, a lot of the major components that you deal with will work together and they actually are compatible. But there was a while there where it, that just was not the case at all. Like, I mean, you're, you still see it every once in a while. I forget what company it is. I think it's NZXT. They use a, a 12 volt LED, which doesn't really matter until you realize that every other company uses a 5 volt. Meaning, if you hook up <laughs> something with that NZXT, so that you can just fry a fry a light, and it you know because it looks the same, and but it's slightly different standards from company to company. But so yeah, that is that was a huge pain in the butt. It's mostly fixed now. I wonder if this is a step back or if it's just they're kind of early in development. I would assume, I mean, MSI is big enough to realize that. Yeah, hopefully. You know, I would hope this isn't going to be something that is just strictly MSI for a while uh, because definitely, depending on the price point, I would consider getting one. Just, I always, I love getting stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Sprucing up my areas. Yeah, why not? Um, but that was just a little quick... Uh, I'm underground. It's like Philips Hue lighting. That's the other thing. Did they announce pricing? <laughs> no, they, they, they did not it, about, it is kind of like the pricing. Philips. You ever see those Philips Hue light bulbs? I haven't. They're, they're, it, it's literally a light bulb. They're like 50 bucks a pop, but it's a light bulb that you can control from your phone. I mean... I had a buddy in college that literally... A smart he, light he, bulbs. Yeah, he set it up that he had like a button that he hit it and the lights turned red and Apple Music started playing. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, it, they, they're kind of neat, but they are expensive. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how much this ambient light thing is going to run. Like, if it's going to be in the, what, anywhere under like 50, 80, okay. It's MSI. I know. But it's it, a computer it, peripheral. I know. It's but if not going to be 50 to 80. If they start doing like, this is 150, mm, nah. Nah, fam. Uh, <laughs> I guess those Philips Hughes, you could send them to respond to the weather and stuff. That's what I'm hoping. They're really cool. That's They're what I'm expensive. hoping that this game, or not this game, this uh, this product does. is like reacts to the world around you. That, that to me, would be dope. It would be. Um, however, I'm going to pass the reins over to you for the next topic. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we, t we touched on it a little bit earlier, um, but I kind of want to dive a little bit more into 
the other half of AMD's kind of press release that they did. So we talked about the cards earlier. They also started putting out some info on the third generation generation Ryzen chips, which should be out. We're not sure when this year, but they should be out probably towards the middle or the end. Um, there are a couple interesting things with this, so we'll just we'll hit out the high points. One, the chip that they debuted or they showed off was an 8-core 16 thread. They didn't put out a, a number for it or anything like that, uh, or a part number or description, but it effectively has uh, about the same specs as the 9900K from Team Red. What's interesting on this, though, is they did Cinebench benchmarks, and both chips were essentially tied in terms of performance. So that in of itself isn't that interesting until you factor in that AMD traditionally is a, a lower cost alternative. So if their performance is the same at a, at a lower cost, that it's very, very good for uh, them continuing to improve their, their right. market share in terms of CPUs. Oh, yeah. um, they focused, it seems, on I, improving the IPC with these chips, which essentially um, used to hear one of the main things that you'd hear when people were describing processors. Um, Intel had better single-threaded performance, meaning for things like games or things that were only using one core, one thread, Intel did was better. And what that, that metric is, is IPC. So by AMD focusing on improving that portion of their processors, that's essentially them saying, hey, we recognize our weak point and we're actively working to try and, and bring that up at least to parity with Intel. Um, but yeah, the last thing on this that, that is interesting is, so AMD's committed to the AM4 socket through 2020, um, which is great. And they also announced that the third generation Ryzen chips would be the first processors available on the market that can handle PCIe 4. Um, so that'll soon be the, um, you know, you'll probably see graphics cards in like another year or two that'll all be running um, PCIe 4. You actually even may have boards that are out right now that can run PCIe 4, which is kind of interesting to me. Because the chips are going to be able to handle PCIe 4, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. So like the motherboard manufacturers will have to go through each board and provide a BIOS update, um, and it won't be on every board. But there will be certain boards that are already out in systems right now that you drop a third-generation Ryzen chip in, and you can use with PCIe 4, which is kind of nifty. I mean, it's new. It's it, yeah, up and it's, coming. Yeah, and I, I appreciate how much they're um, they're focusing on on sticking with. You can use this board for years rather than like Intel side of the fence, where if you want to stay on the most recent Intel chip, you have to upgrade every nine months or something like that. Right. They're like, no, nah, we're going to use the same same chipset um, and mostly the same boards for four years. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, Rio two says, uh, thinking four hundred dollars for the Ryzen seven eight core. That's about right. Yeah, I mean that. Hopefully, I, that's the that's the thing. Is it's so early at this point? Like, right. I don't even think they they put out the name of what they're gonna call their seven nanometer Ryzen three. Like, if they're gonna call it the thirty seven hundred X, or if they're gonna change up their product names again, we don't know. But yeah, that. I'm, I'm gonna say thinking four hundred is probably about. I, right. I would say, I wouldn't say any more than four hundred to be honest with you, um, just because the price points of the Ryzen's yeah, in well, general were. It's really, the MSRP of a ninety nine hundred K right now. Ninety nine hundred K. It's. I think I was seeing like four four fifty four sixty five thirty five thirty. Oh, that went up. Is that a third party? Yeah, that that was Amazon. Let me look at MSRP on Intel's site. Nonetheless, I, I do think... Uh, yeah, 500 was, on Intel's okay. site. So, yeah, I mean, um, uh, if they if they get down to that 400 mark <laughs> and they're able to have performance within a couple percent of Intel's, I, I think the uh, the Ryzen series is going to continue to do really well. Oh, they've... Uh, yeah, I think it will just... I actually think it'll... I would want... I want to say at one point that AMD, on the train they're going with the CPU, I don't think they'll ever dethrone Intel, but I think it would get to the point where, all right, you, you really have a run for your money now. I hope so. I mean, that's uh, the, when it, when it comes down to like, especially, you know, when you only have two major players, yeah. AMD bringing out Threadripper made Intel processors better within a year. Like, we saw that. You saw Threadripper come out, you saw Intel go, Oh, shit. Mm -hmm, right. And then they were like, oh, here's a processor that's decent. Here's, you know what I mean? They actually put some. So I, I do hope that, yeah, I hope they continue to do that because essentially we win. You know, the consumer wins in that case. 
I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting. Um, I know since I've started here, I've seen... Actually, okay, not, not since I've started here, but uh, since Ryzen came out, I've seen a, a lot more end users switch over to AMD versus Intel Plus allocation issues. I mean, and so I, I go, started here... You can't here forget in, that. I started here at the beginning of 2016, and I think it, I saw a handful of AMD systems. Meanwhile, now we see you know, a handful a day. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just in, in the anecdotal evidence of what we've seen, yeah, no, they've been doing really well. Um, yeah, we got one, kind of, one kind of last thing to, to cover with hardware, and this is just kind of a, a minor update and something I'm curious to get your opinion on from the gaming side, um, is Vive is coming out with a new Vive Pro. They're, it's called the Vive Pro I. Essentially, it's a Vive Pro with eye tracking. That's, that's really the, the long and short of it. Um, what's interesting with this, though, is, one, it's not HTC's proprietary eye tracking. They're using right. a company called Toby, which is, a, I think, Swedish, if memory serves, um, literally eye tracking company. That's what they focus on. So they're pairing with those guys to bring eye tracking into the Vive. So what that means is, like, if you're in VR... And you know you hit a, you pull up your your menu and you want to change your sound settings or lower your volume or something. Instead of clicking buttons, you would just look like with your eye, just look at the volume button. And then after a second, it recognizes that that's what you're looking at, and then it opens it. Um, that's kind of cool. So they're bringing that in. And why this is interesting to me though is because we haven't heard anything from Oculus in a while. Like, have you heard anything from Oculus? No, not at all. What are all. they doing? Um, because I mean, they brought out that controller, question. which was way better than the HTC controller. Those Oculus Touch controllers, but uh, Vive's like we put out the Vive Pro, we put out, we're putting out eye tracking, we're bringing that in, and Oculus. The last like two things I've heard from Oculus is, oh yeah, we fired somebody. <laughs> I, I haven't heard anything. Like, I, what, what are you working on? What's coming up? Uh, real quick. Uh, Ruchu says he has a X470 R7 2700, Ryzen 7 2700. Yeah. Uh, how do you enjoy it? And are, are you going to get the third gen? Like that, I guess that's my question. I've seen a lot of people upgrade from the first to the second. Are you going to make that jump to the third? Let us know. Um, but back to the Vive Pro uh, and Oculus. I, look, man, I don't know. Uh, I was talking to Gerard about it the other day. I, I think they're... I want to say or I want to say Oculus is going to augmented more than virtual. I, I don't know what they're doing, but I, we you know we were just talking about this where having at least two companies competing with one another that's you get better stuff. Like if Oculus goes, is th who's the next one to come in to show off VR stuff with HTC? Is Samsung? You're going to compare a Vive to what your phone can do? Right. Like, I was just about to say. Yeah, it just seems. <laughs> It's um, so I mean, obviously, it's great that Vive's coming out with more stuff, but I'm curious what the market's gonna look like in a year. Like, is Oculus still gonna be they're probably still gonna be around because they got that Facebook money, yo? But that's probably the only reason they're around, to be honest with you. Oh, no, I mean, the the as of now, I mean, yeah, as of right now, Vive came in and it just dominated, dominated the virtual reality market, yeah. Um, but eye tracking to me, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I think one of the biggest things I look at for eye tracking would be more or less for the streaming market, um, because you're watching a streamer who is using a device that uses eye tracking. So really, you're actually gonna get. I guess it's one of those immersion things. Like you're really gonna get to see what the the broadcaster is looking at it's like you're actually looking oh i get what you're saying that'd be kind of cool or through yeah. their eyes so that's i think that's pretty interesting and, and the gaming aspect um on the and then i also look at it as just a um i'm a, I'm a i i follow a lot of things for disabled gamers and stuff like that mm -hmm. and i also see this being really really good for for the uh, disabled gamers out there I think um, um, I think the eye tracking as a I don't know if in the Vive like right now this Vive Pro Eye that comes out I don't know if that's going to be that interesting or if that's going to be that groundbreaking, but I think yeah the eye tracking there's so many applications that are going to come up for that. 
Uh, Ruru, I think the big companies will develop VR for military, not consumers. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the big yeah. things. And the other uh, one of the other things that a lot of firms are using for VR is uh, doing like architecture stuff. The um, oh and, medical as well. And medical, definitely. yeah, and that's a. So we saw like um, we saw a demo that came out with you booted up into this VR system and you could look at a building and you could see like, here's where the elevators are going to be. Here's where the duct work is going to be. If you click this um, in VR, it shows you as you look around like the airflow of the, like the CO2 filters that were coming in a hospital. That pretty awesome. They're doing a lot of neat stuff. And, and yeah, and Ruru brings up a good point. That is where kind of the new cutting edge, the interesting stuff comes and then it trickles down to consumer. Absolutely. Absolutely. They actually, they just came out with, uh, I forget the name of the company. It came out with a $6,000 VR headset that's pretty much designed for use in, um, in corporate environments as, as a training kind of setup kind of deal. Oh, yeah. Instead of being just for your, you know, your $800, which is expensive, but when compared to six grand, right? you know, it's a little bit easier to pill to swallow. for your buck here. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I just think, uh, VR in general, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, but I, I, it's definitely, it definitely has a lot of potential, not, uh, not in the gaming market as much anymore as what I, I think, but more or less the, uh, the business, uh, definitely military government stuff, oh, yeah. as Rutu said. I think there is a very, very good use for it. I just don't think gaming is like the big use for it has a lot of people seen it or saw it when like vr was started surfacing like really surfacing maybe I, i'd be curious to see if um because i've been thinking we'd see these for a long time uh, arcades vr arcades there are some as uh, but a, there is as a popular thing like to me that would be the definitely most um, accessible way but i mean i i agree with you on that and i've seen like some on facebook like but there are ways away they're, they're like they're oh, in yeah. big cities, but like the way that some There's one in Chicago, I think that might be the one I'm thinking of. So, uh, one of them was executed like freaking Ignite. awesome. Ignite in Chicago, I think they have a VR arcade. What? I know. According to Brooke, there actually Where? might be one in Cle. Wait, there's one in Cleveland. No way. Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, we'll have to talk about those off streams. We might just be going there. Yeah. What the hell? I mean, I'm I'm down for that. That sounds wonderful. Oh, they closed <laughs> permanently. Rip. All right. Rip. Welcome to Cleveland. I'll be your guy. <laughs> um, a lot of snow, a lot of road construction, and some stuff that closes. But let me tell you, it was 50 degrees <laughs> Tuesday, okay? And then the past two days were a, a blizzard. Yeah, we got like, what, six inches in two days? Uh, yeah, it was insane. It's ridiculous. Uh, so we got some news for you. Uh, so CES, we yeah. were at CES uh, in the Alpha Cool booth this week, obviously, because, you know, I'm not Joe. Uh, yeah, so, if you guys didn't see um, the... Oh, what is it? Section nine. That, that was yes, what it's called. the definitely. purple custom modded build that Zach did. Check it out. They're putting it up on the screen. Freaking beautiful. Check um, it out. That was for the Alpha Cole booth at CES. That was kind of why we did this. But uh, so I've seen I've seen Zach do a lot of cool things. But like I pulled him aside. I was like, dude, this is this is probably one of the best things I've seen you do. Like, yeah, you this did is a really good job. Yeah, this um, is one of the best builds we've ever done. And you can, I mean, just looking at it, you can definitely tell like the the care and effort that went into it. Oh, it's just um, clean. That, it, definitely. A... Um, oh, Gerard said about the VR uh, VR gaming place. In Detroit, it would have burned down. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but uh, check out the landing page to the custom modded system that we have featured at the Alpha Cool Suite in, at the Mirage. Uh, we'll have details and a follow-up for, uh, for the show next week on our live stream when J uh, Joe is back in his seat. Um, and we have been posting videos from CES this week. I was actually talking about it not too earlier yeah. uh, in regards to the uh, EVGA sound card. Uh, so take a look at our social media to catch up on that. So our you know Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and a, a big, big shout-out 
to AlphaCool, Seasonic, Mainframe, Customwork, and Clockwork Industries for making the modded PC a reality uh, for us. Uh, we greatly thank you. Um, yeah, we did all AlphaCool, yeah. uh, liquid cooling parts. Clockwork Industries made a, a custom um, uh, radiator for us, Jim Wiest over there. Um, so, yeah, we, we got a lot of help on this build, and, uh, and it turned out really, really well. It did. It did. And can't wait to get it back in the... the Throw the stream room. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then we also have two new promotions now available. Uh, the first one, NVIDIA GeForce RTX Battlefield 5 and or Anthem Gaming Bundle. Uh, so for a limited time, purchase a qualifying RTX 2080 Ti or a 2080 graphics card. Or a game or a gaming desktop and get both battlefield 5 and anthem uh, pick up a qualifying qualifying geforce rtx 2070 graphics card or a gaming desktop and get your choice of these incredible titles uh, if i had to throw in my opinion do anthem i like battlefield 5 but anthem looks a little bit more promising or uh, just get a 28 ti yeah get just both. get a 28 or 28 ti and get both of them just do it okay. just do it that's the Great Shia, Shia LaBeouf once said, just do it. Do it! Jesus, all right. I had to be loud. I've Joe's been, not here. He He's to. always I know. loud. It's I had so, to do it for him. I'm like, Does this stream feel quieter to you guys? It feels quieter to us. <laughs> it really does. Joe, if you're watching, I hope I made you proud. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the second new promotion now available, uh, AMD Ryzen Tom Clancy's The Division Two Gaming Bundle. Uh, so this is the Equipped to Win bundle. Uh, get the get Tom Clancy's The Division 2 free when you buy select AMD Ryzen desktop processors. Uh, qualifying purchases, uh, systems built with 2nd Gen Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 processors. Uh, so, I mean, now's a good time uh, yeah. to actually do both of these deals if you want to get down to it. Uh, you're walking away with three... Big titles, yeah, and but they're free. actually that, that's something. I, it, it seems that these are getting better. Like I, I remember, definitely right. Like three definitely. years ago, it was like, oh, you get a free game that you don't care about. Like it was always a crappy game, or like it was the it was the equivalent of like a little plastic toy in a Cracker Jack box. Like, it, it was really? there, <laughs> but it wasn't great. Now they're like all these bundles. What we've had, Call of Duty Four. Uh, we had Battlefield Destiny, 5 for a Battlefield while. Battlefield 5, Destiny like, 2. Um, all these AAA titles. They're... Actually, AMD had a really... The one that just ended was really good. Right? Like You get, like, two or three titles, uh, and, like, they featured Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2, the remake. It was all shockingly, like... It, not like, shockingly. It was stuff you want to play. Like, it, that that's new, right? I'm not losing my mind. No, it used to be garbage. Okay, yeah, I was going to say. I mean, I know the Rocket League one we had was was big but like Hardly, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't want Rocket League. But I'm saying like five years ago, like buying I mean, five it, years the game ago you would have got you got uh Peggle. Pe Peggle. Oh man. I forgot about Peggle. That or uh uh you know some gems for Marble Candy Blast Crush. Ultra. <laughs> oh man. We are we are getting up there. Uh so we're gonna transition to gaming. Uh my favorite topic. Uh so actually speaking of Anthem in one of our promotions, uh the full system requirements have been released. So uh recommended specs uh are are looking to be of a mid range PC. Uh, so I do like the sound of that. So um, the recommended specs are going to be an Intel Core i7-4790 or higher or a Ryzen 3 1300X. Or you could, you know, just get the uh, <coughs> Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7. Mm, uh, <laughs> 16 gigs of RAM, which is kind of the staple. Uh, NVIDIA GTX 1060 or RTX 2060. Uh, so the GPU RAM, you only need 4 gigs. So I'm good. Uh, and then 50 gigs of free space. Um, so I feel like this is a, this is a, a good thing to show of optimization. All right. So just by the these fact that it's specs. Only, well, I'm just like, look at it. The, the 50 gig, because what? The Witcher is like 100 and no, some, right? No. No, you're thinking. What am I thinking of? Red Dead. That's it. Like, uh, it, it's, I'm surprised that it's down at 50. Like, that's actually well, you that's a think fairly there, lean game file for now. Or, like, for 2019. I mean... Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad, it's a good thing. I mean, is it a good thing, though? Yeah, why wouldn't it be? 
a, a smaller file for a game as big as they're hyping it up to be. Hopefully that means. I mean, I, hopefully that just means they did a good job at utilizing their, you know, their resources. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I, I feel like this is, could be a really, really good move for Bioware. Uh, what is up, Foreign? How are you doing today? Um, I, re- I feel like this could be a very good move for Bioware. They definitely need it after uh, Andromeda mm-hmm. rip. Um, but And it's also a good thing. One of the biggest things for me is optimization, okay? Okay. Uh, so if you don't optimize well, because there's not a lot of people. There's a lot of consumers out there that can't afford nice and glamorous PCs and have just an essential budget build. No, I mean I think uh, I'm cu- the up, for, up until the longest time the most popular card on Steam's uh, hardware was like a nine sixty or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't now. I wouldn't doubt it. While you're looking that up, I'm gonna continue a little bit on here. Um, so if it, if the optim- optimization is executed correctly, this will be huge. Uh, contingent on if the game is good or not, obviously. <laughs> um, so these specs come to a surprise to me due to how vivid and gorgeous the world looks um however we will get to try it out soon sean because the beta it comes out uh, january 25th 2019 uh so that's actually not that far away so i will be diving into that um but here is actually a little bit of uh interesting news about this uh, bioware is working with nvidia to bring dlss to anthem I good. I'm. I, I want to see how uh, DLSS is deep learning super sampling. If I'm not mistaken, I believe you're correct. I'm curious to see. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. It'll be a AAA title. Will be one of the first ones to actually kind of have it developed with it. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see. Um, and kind of what we were talking about. And Ruru mentioned it. Uh, the GTX 970 was the majority last gen. Yeah. So right now, uh, 1060 is actually the number one. Oh, there we go couple pascal cards and then yeah you still have your your maxwell mid-range cards yeah. and even your 1050 t- or your 750 ti um those are That's all still yeah the there. most popular cards out there so yeah exactly what you were talking about with um with the optimization and the other thing that i would like to point out on that was it was all four core cpus yeah i, I mean most people were running quad cores or dual cores or something yeah. like that uh, so Foreign asks, do you think the Intel CPU will drop in its price when the Ryzen 3 Gen comes out? No. Uh, meaning the 8700K and 9700K. Uh, I think the 8700K might be a maybe, definitely not the 9700K. Not the 9700 The 87 maybe, but Intel is usually pretty good about kind of killing off their their production of the like the 8700K when the 70 9700K comes out. I don't. I don't think you'll see a price decrease directly from Intel. I think you yeah. may see like consume or like uh, Newegg. Yeah, dis- Newegg might have a couple yeah. that they're like, we need to burn these, and then you know they sell them cheaper. But I don't think you'll see any kind of price decrease from Intel's side. Definitely, uh, Rue Two says early DLSS is locked at two four K. Um, I mean, you're not wrong. Look at Battlefield Five, the only game to really support it right now. Not that well. Uh, <coughs> sad. Uh, well, I, I think the thing to take into account here is I don't believe the DLSS is going to be available right at launch. Probably not. Uh, so maybe they will actually work on this. So the way I see it is this would give them time to really, really work on it after the game's out um, and make it good. Like actually make it run well on on these cards, actually learn how to utilize them. I don't know. That's wishful thinking. I'd love to see it happen. I, probably not going to happen. Let's be honest. Uh, Ruto Two says Intel CPU price won't drop. The seventy seven hundred K is still around three hundred dollars. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, the way I see it, yes, they do cost a little bit more. I, to me, it's really the way I look at it. For me, is personal preference, and you know, what between Intel and AMD? Yeah. It, yeah, it boils down to what what you're doing with it. Definitely, and, you know what you're. Definitely, you know if you if you're going to overclock and you want to just get like a high overclock and don't want to spend any more money than you need to, AMD. If you're looking at doing a workstation, something like that, AMD in most cases tends to be it out Intel. But yeah, it, it's there's so many different moving pieces and parts. That's kind of what makes it interesting. Is there's there's never really a, a single right answer. 
there's always a bunch of different things to consider and, and different ways to do things. Definitely. Uh, so the last, I guess, actual game, gaming topic I'm going to talk about real quick is the Resident Evil 2 remake. Oh. It's a demo that's coming today. I'm going to go home, download it. It's going to be great. I'm going to make my kids dinner and be like, go play. <laughs> uh, I need to play this. Uh, however, there's a twist. Uh-oh. It's only 30 minutes long. What? Uh, so it is called the one-shot demo. So you have one shot to live or one shot to die. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Like once you do it once, you don't, you're not allowed yes. to do it again? I, that's pretty much what I read. Huh. Uh, so I do want to say that I'm so freaking happy for this game. I cannot wait to play this game. I love Resident Evil. It's freaking awesome. Um, but yeah, so here's the cool thing. After you beat the demo, where it ends, you will be rewarded with a new cinematic trailer. All right. Okay. Uh, it's probably out there right now on YouTube. I have no idea what it uh, contains. I don't want to know, so please don't tell me. I would a actually be very upset and, you know, probably just run away forever. Uh, <laughs> but the remake comes out January 25th on PS4, Xbox One, and Windows PC. I just had to throw that in there. Um, it's exciting stuff. Uh, but now we're going to go into some hardware slash gaming topics uh so the first one that i thought was pretty nifty uh hp announces the first gaming laptop with a 240 hertz display thought sean i don't know man like it's cool it's not <laughs> it's cool it's not for me like i'm not part of the market for this the but i could see um because as a admittedly i tend to prefer a higher resolution and i don't care as much about frame rate um but what I, where i could see this is like uh for esports guys oh definitely like people definitely. doing like overwatch and league and dota and all that the they don't care about resolution nearly as much they tend to prefer like oh. 1080p but having as high a frame frame rate as you can get with that 240 i think that's what we're going to see a lot of people using these for we're too spoiled the freaking trailer for me it has zombies too can you, can you believe that? God, I asked one thing. One thing. God. You get no respect. Uh, uh, so the display for this laptop, though, is only going to be 1920 by 1080, I guess, with a 240 hertz display. You can only have so much. Can't have your cake and eat it, too. <laughs> um, so quote, quote from the article, to take advantage of the high refresh rate, HP is outfitting the Omen 15 with NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 20 series GPUs. Um, it's going to be powered alongside the i7 8750H. Uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 2666 RAM. Could, uh, could have a little bit higher speed, whatever. Uh, and this will be powered by the newly announced RTX laptop GPUs. Uh, so one of the biggest bummer here is you have this really dope laptop. And then you only have 128 gigs you have 128 gig SSD. I mean, I guess that makes up for a <gasps> two terabyte, or I, I guess a, a two terabyte hard drive can make up for it. Hey, I mean, that's something you see, like, because we don't see it all that much here um, in terms of how many we see, but most notebooks that people buy do have, like, those little 128, But you're getting a laptop like this. No, if you look at, like, even uh, MSI, Asus, most of your main manufacturers... The base model that they sell, they don't have options for a bigger capacity SSD. That's why a lot of people end up going to companies like us is because we can put a big SSD in and we will a lot of times when you're going on like Amazon. Yeah. The only option is like you get a giant HDD, a small M2, and that's it. There's no other options. Well, if they're not going to do it for you, we will. Give us a call. Give this man a call. Give Kyle a call. Give Kyle a call. Give Kyle a call. The man needs some love. All right. Uh, so another cool thing, Cooler Master updates keyboard lineup. Didn't even know they had keyboards, to be honest with you. Yeah, with they do low, some uh, mechanicals. With what well, th they announced uh, a new lineup. Ooh. Uh, so a new lineup of the low profile cherry sw with t low profile cherry switches. Totally messed that up. Um, so the biggest thing that grabbed my attention is this can function wirelessly. So this is a mechanical keyboard that can be wireless. Hmm. Um, and it is reportedly can last up to four to five months if you have the RGB turning off. <laughs> Come on. Uh, it I mean, has RGB. Yeah, you're going to um, use it. 
Uh, but it's, uh, I believe it was like 10 to 11 hours. No, 10 to 15 hours with the lighting on. So it's still pretty cool. That's a gaming session in and of itself. Okay, for people like us, our gaming session's, what, three to four hours maybe yeah. after work, give or take. Yeah. Um, so four to five months, that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Uh, there will be three variants. Uh, so the full keyboard variant is going to be in Q3. Uh, the 10 keyless variant in a Q... Q2, I believe that's what I put. Yeah, I messed up typo. And then the one that I really, really thought was beautiful is the 65 key variant that's coming in March. Um, so the reason I like 65 E, the reason I like compact keyboards, right? Play a lot of FPSs, okay? I, I move my arm a lot because my sensitivity is too low. Everyone yells at me all the time when they sit down on my stuff. Are you one of those weirdos that has like a mouse pad that's this big? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A hundred percent. Like it's actually probably from here to here. Why? I need all that space. That's dude. not a mouse pad. That's a yoga mat. So what, dude? Kill two, two birds with one stone. Right, fine. Whatever, kitties. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, Ruitu says a lot of budget laptops are doing one terabyte ACD with sixteen gigabyte Optane. Yeah. Oh, that's even worse. God. Yeah, I mean, and it, it boils down to one of the, it's one of those things where it's why you saw, like, and I'm not speaking about them now, but like 10 years ago, Alienware PCs caught a lot of flack because they would use a budget PSU because that's not what people are looking at. And a lot of times when these, these notebook companies are coming out, you know, people are focusing that, oh, man, it has a 2080. Oh, man, it has an i7. And they, they don't pay that much attention to how much storage it has until they purchase in a lot of cases. Um, so, yeah, I think that's... That is, unfortunately, in the notebook market, that happens a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but now with the uh, the keyboard, uh, yeah, I need a lot of room. So I, I need that, that That's, small. That well, insane. another big thing, like, too, though, is, like, I, I turn my keyboard. So if you see a lot of professionals will play like this, I actually do have my keyboard like that, and this is how I play. So like you are cutting off some room. Yeah, still, so here's like, the thing. Even if, so like if you're if you're I'll, over I'll here, you. if so you're like, over here and your like, mouse pad is that wide, you would have to reach like you'd be like this, trying to play well, no, Overwatch. No, my computer sits on it over there. I don't have it that spread out. I just you never know, man. Maybe I don't judge. Don't hate God. <laughs> uh, and then the last cool thing about the keyboard uh, it has low profile switches. So nothing new. I know. I get it. However, when you have kids. And they're trying to sleep or take a nap in the living room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, my clickety-clack keyboard wakes up my uh, oh, year-and-a-half-old daughter. It's not a fun time. Yeah, no, that would not um, be. Definitely low-profile switches. Uh, is it? I need to make an upgrade soon, so this very could well be. Yeah, hey, man, be, man, it be could work. be the time. Um, and then the last topic that I thought was pretty cool actually comes from CES. Uh, so HyperX. We were talking about them earlier, too. Yes. Uh, they are bringing a new mic, new gaming headsets, and more. All right. So uh, the more is a, it's a gaming mouse. <laughs> it, it, was, it was not that spectacular, so I didn't throw it on there. Um, however, they are taking, HyperX is taking their own spin on standalone mics. Uh, so to me, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, okay. With how, I guess, crucial standalone mics are becoming with streamers and content creators. I mean, even, uh, even um, like, Gerard, Joe, I mean, we have a couple people that we play games with. Oh, I'm definitely, run, it's, it's definitely, yeah. that's why I think the sound card, the EVGA sound card is, like, really interesting to me. Because I always wanted to have, like, a standalone mic and whatnot. Rather than um, an integrated one. Uh, definitely. Um so I, I think it's interesting, though, because, uh, you know, there's there's already, I mean, these audio technical ones, like, they're they're dope. Oh, no, these like, are Like, we mic, all yeah. voted on them, like, is HyperX going to compare with that? I mean, it, yeah, it's interesting knows? to see them come in. Um, but the, the bigger solution, I think they will do all right. I really do. Uh, reason being is because uh, the Cloud Series headsets, they had really good mics on them. Oh, I mean, like, I, I, had a, I had a pair of HyperX Cloud 2s for like two years before they broke on me. They were great. Um, but I'm anxious to see how they can execute it. Uh, the new mic will retail for $140 in March. Um, however, you can get the Blue Yeti, the blackout USB microphone. That's the yeah. most popular one. It's like if you, if you search. The same people that make Snowball? Yeah. Yeah. 
it's well that's essentially what it is it's the blue yeti snowball blackout oh oh, oh wait yeah, no yeah. no 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 that's i always hear people talk about snowball mics that's why I... it okay they're they're in the same family they're, yeah, they're yeah. Like the, yeah i might have a couple related. of mix-ups here um but nonetheless if you actually google yeti mic yeah that is the first microphone that comes out and it's 112 dollars on amazon so it's okay. the most reviewed so there's the most it's the most gone to mic out there really if you want to get down to it that i guess that family is the extra 48 dollars going to be worth it to the consu- worth it to the consumer i guess is the biggest question yeah i mean who knows that that's what's interesting HyperX is a is a really weird company they're a kingston subsidiary they are so they make like they good memory but then they also have decent peripherals and usually when when a company does one the other is not very good i have to say ruru too my man thank you I have a uh, Thank Ruru you. has a forty inch by eighteen inch mouse pad and asks us not to judge him. Well, he won't. Okay, so yeah, no, the the Yeti is correct. The snowball is okay. So it would be the blue Yeti, blue snowball. Um, the snowball is around forty to fifty dollars. Uh, oh, they're, oh, okay. So like the snowball yeah. is the the lower end one, and then they have the mid range, yeah, which is the Yeti. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so those are the snowball, and then the Yetis are actually the ones that I believe look like these. They're the Man, so yeah, the, I mean yeah, the Yetis yeah, are the ones that HyperX is going to be competing. I think if what we've seen out of that company, I mean they they make good stuff. I I could see this being another popular piece. Definitely, um, and then real quick before we head out, they also announced two new headsets quote-unquote new, uh, the Cloud Orbit and the Cloud Orbit S. S. Both feature Waves NX 3D audio. Um, so me being curious and like wanting to know about these things, uh, so Waves NX 3D audio is actually it's a really cool integrated feature, I should say. Is it like their DAC? It, it's like an integrated sound card almost? Somewhat. Is that what? So like it actually is like true 3D audio. Yeah. So... Um, it's there. I, I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of programs that are trying to implement that for like when you're having a meeting. Okay, so let's just say Brooke is sitting in front of us and she hears me talk. She's gonna hear it more in her mm-hmm. left ear than. I, I think that's a cool feature. Um, yeah. Really for gaming, obviously. The you know me being who I am. Um, I, I I and then I also put in here. I feel that the support for Waves and X head tracking is going to be a it's going to become a staple in the near future for all purposes. Pretty much what I was just saying. Um, so definitely what a time to be alive. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. What a time to be alive. What a time. Um, so definitely, definitely tune in next week. Yeah. So next uh, week uh, we'll be we'll be doing a little bit, not necessarily a, a, an interview, but we'll do a little bit of a Q and A with Joe about things that he saw um, and experienced at CES. Some stuff that we'll have up on our social media, and some that we don't. Um, so join us next week. It'll be two p.m. again. And 2:30. Uh, is it two thirty? Two thirty. It's two thirty. Sorry, my bad. We we get in here at two. I always have that in my head. Uh, but thank you for tuning in with us today. And Thanks for everybody talking to us. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You guys have a good one.